This video is sponsored by I Put the Egg on the Sulaco. It was me t shirt. Check it out at the viral store. <laughs> Surprise! What would happen if a facehugger impregnated a T-Rex? Well, I guess this would happen. But what about a raptor or triceratops? They no succus, anyone? What about a cyborg T-Rex? Okay, we're getting off topic. The point is, the xenomorph differs depending on its host. Let's look at this in more detail. Xenomorphs have been alternately portrayed as both plantigrade and digitigrade organisms, usually in accordance to their host. This was due to horizontal gene transfer during the gestation period. The xenomorph also takes on some of the basic physical attributes and intelligence level of the host from which it was born, allowing the individual xenomorph to adapt to the host's environment. It was theorized that the embryo attaches itself to a major artery of its host to get nutrients as it grows. It's presumed that the DNA from the blood it acquires infuses itself with the embryo's DNA to make up for its lack of genetic structure Human-spawned xenomorphs were usually portrayed as having humanoid hind limbs, while other non-human-spawned xenomorphs, such as runners, have sported double-jointed legs due to its quadrupedal host. The DNA reflex is a term given to the process by which a xenomorph inherits certain characteristics from its host organism. The process accounts for the physical and perhaps even mental variations apparent in some specimens of the creature. The DNA reflex accounts for alterations to the xenomorph's basic form based on the genetic makeup of the host inside which it gestates. It's not entirely clear whether the process is intentional or simply an unintended side effect of the way in which the chestburster develops as a sort of cancer built from the host's own cells. However, given the way in which the changes to the adult xenomorph are so successfully integrated into the creature, it seems highly likely that it's an intentional process. One suggested purpose for the DNA reflex is to help the adult xenomorph adapt to the environment into which it will be born. By adopting characteristics of another organism that is hopefully native to that environment, the xenomorph will be better suited to its surroundings. The assimilation of host DNA apparently also helps the developing creature to hide from its host's immune system. Embryos are thought to copy around 10-15% to of the host's genetic code during their early development. Notable physical traits inherited from host organisms include bipedalism, quadrupedalism, and in the case of predaliens, mandibles and dreadlocks. It's also been theorized that the adult xenomorph may adopt some mental traits from the host, such as general intelligence and certain instincts. Examples put forward include predaliens that have been witnessed to ritualistically mutilate their prey in a manner similar to Yaucha. As a side effect of the DNA reflex, xenomorph genetic material is also transferred to the host that allowed United Systems military scientists to clone a xenomorph queen aboard the USM Auriga, as a queen had been gestating inside of Ellen Ripley during her time on Furina Fury 161. Blood samples taken from her and later recovered by the USM contained the infant xenomorph's DNA. However, the immense complexity of the genetic assimilation process meant the creation of a viable Ripley and Queen pair took years of research and numerous failed attempts. While the idea of the xenomorph adopting different characteristics dependent on its host was not seen until Alien 3, the concept had actually always been a part of the creature's makeup and was first suggested during the development of Alien. Ridley Scott has stated that, while shaping the alien's life cycle, the pre-production team considered how the creature would take on a different appearance were it to gestate inside a different host. The director has gone on to state that the creature in the first film is merely the man version of Alien. In the novelization of Alien Covenant, David states that the hybridized creatures spawn from the black liquid pathogen inherit traits from their host organism, similar to the DNA reflex of the xenomorph. Indeed, it's possible this is where the species acquired its ability to take traits from its host. So that's an introduction to the DNA reflex. What do you reckon? Which hybridized xeno would you like to see? Croc alien? Rhino alien? The possibilities are endless. Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Also, please follow me on Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, consider supporting me on Patreon. Or you might catch me serving you at McDonald's real soon. Oh, and make sure you click the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'll see you later.